Hello, and uh, welcome to the next uh, installation of little bite-size um, information pieces. We welcome Michael Shields, who's the chairman of the Cheshire Provincial Masters and Masons Forum. Hello there, Michael. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, and are you okay yourself? Yeah, I'm very good. I'm very. I'm really looking forward to this because obviously I've known you for an awful long time, uh, and, and you were very kind enough to propose me into Freemasonry all those years ago. So I'm really looking forward to hearing all about yourself and obviously all about the Masters and Masons Forum. So let's get straight into the first five questions. What indeed is your favourite food? It's got to be Italian. I've got a mother who's Italian. I've been brought up in Italian food. Uh, like love lasagna, spaghetti, although I'm, well, you obviously know I was born in Scotland. My father's Scottish uh, in the borders of Scotland. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's got to be Italian food. Excellent. Love, love it with a nice glass of Chianti. That really doesn't surprise me there. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about your favourite film then? Which, which one is that? Yeah, I've got, I mean, I've got such a lot of, it's a hard one that because I've got a lot of thrillers, sci-fi, everything. But I must say the Bond franchise is, a, is the thing I've been, I grew up with. Um, Thunderball, I thought was a fantastic film. And also the, the, the most recent one, Spectre, was absolutely brilliant as well. So I'm looking forward to the next one coming out. And uh, yes, uh, I really, I really enjoy the Bond franchise. Thank you. So you fancy yourself as a bit of an action star yourself? Oh, right? yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Well, on that note then, um, who's the most famous person that you've met? I've met a lot of uh, famous people over the years, but one guy that seemed to, uh, I, got, I got on really well with and I had quite a number of conversations with uh, on Sportsman's Evenings was a guy called Peter Shilton, the, the Lingling goalkeeper. Lovely guy, uh, very inspirational. He's, uh, he's talked at the, uh, his talks are absolutely superb and I thought, he's a, you know, I really sort of was impressed with him. So yeah, Peter Shilton, I think you can say, is one of the guys that really sort of takes my mind. Yeah. Interesting us two Scots talking about an England goalkeeper there, but let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do as a day job? Well, I, uh, I do I run my own successful business uh, with, along with my wife. I do business machines uh, in the Northwest. I've been going for 27 years and uh, I thoroughly enjoy it. And uh, it's, uh, I've got a good reputation and um, with good, for good uh, backup and good service. Well, you must have if you've been going for 27 years. Well done on uh, lasting that long and go through several recessions. So what's your favourite sport and uh, obviously the team? If it's okay, the I, think, I think you know this one, but it's uh, football, obviously, and uh, it's Manchester United, which is my favourite team. And uh, I've been many times to Old Trafford and I've met uh, a lot of the uh, players. I've met a lot of the uh, managers as well. And Yeah, I that's my favourite team. But I did have a Scottish one as well, which was High Bees. But, uh, but anyway, when I moved down here, I, I decided after seeing George Best uh, in High Bees, I think he's, uh, that's a team for me. I think that uh, your Southern team are a lot bit more successful than your Northern one. So let's move uh, on to uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the actual reason for being here. Just uh, to set the scene, of course, um, tell me about your Masonic journey. Yeah, I started back in um, 1987, uh, 4th of February 87 was initiated, that's some 33 years ago, in Beacon Lodge, uh, number 5357 in Roncorn. And uh, I've progressed and I've really enjoyed my masonry. It's my best uh, ha 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 yeah. Good. My best hobby, should I say. I sort of trying to get out my best hobby. <laughs> that's fine, yeah. Um, so you, I, I always know you through Manchester Lodge, which is where we are, we're involved now, but I, and I'm aware that you're involved in a lot of different things, but the Masters and Masons Forum is the reason that we're, we're here just now. So let's get into that. What is the Masters and Masons Forum all about? Yeah, it's, it's, um, the Masters and Masons Forum is a sort of supportive organisation for new brethren who come into masonry up to being uh, <laughs> provincial apprentice, up to, say, past master until they get provincial honours. Even if they've got parental honours, they might just want to continue to help uh, the newer brethren anyway. But it's a, it is a support organisation. It's a friendly organisation. It's, an, a, 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 it's, it's about, it's about um, camaraderie, uh, friendship, camaraderie, uh, a feeling of uh, being working together. That's what, that's, what the, that's what the Master Masons Forum is really about. Yeah. Okay. And, and how, did, uh, uh, how is it structured is perhaps a better way of putting it. The Master Masons Forum, how is it structured? Right, the structure, well, I've got a chairman as myself, which I obviously, uh, I've got responsibility. I do uh, report to a warden, who's one of the assistant principal masters, Jeff Cunningham. 
Uh, I have two um, vice chairmen, um, Andrew Steeles and uh, Gary Calvin, one taking east, one taking south, uh, the west. And then I've got a number of, uh, I've got a secretary, obviously, and I've got a treasurer, because obviously we have money and we've got minutes to do it, et cetera. And then we've got MF reps, uh, which um, which take over uh, each hall or each area, and they deliver messages to the lodges. They look, they look to uh, assist uh, your, your brethren, Make sure they they they're, they're well um, informed with their with the ritual or informed with the, um, the, the events that were coming up on in the Masters Mason Forum. Um, it's a, that's the sort of thing that's structured at the moment. Yes. So, how does one become a representative in the MMF then? Well, uh, well, what, what what we do is we look for people who are enthusiastic, who who uh, want to go that extra mile, who who want to help other Masons. That's the sort of guys we have chats we're looking for, and the, all the all I can see all the master masons and they're doing a doing a fantastic job, um, and they they're looking to support the the, um, the newer guys and even going right right through to the past masters as well. So this is enthusiastic, committed, dedicated, and people who go that extra mile. That's yeah. the, that's the important thing. And I, I believe that the uh, masters and masons forum have created an academy. Um, how did that come about, and, and what does the academy actually do? Mm, okay, that was uh, that was a brainchild of um, Andrew Steeles and Michael Bryan, who who thought the the, the younger the newer brethren require a, a bit more assistance, a bit more. There was lots of instructions, but the lots of instructions were very very regimented, very structured, and you know more for established type mason. And they wanted to be able to bring these newer brethren into 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 uh, a relaxed atmosphere. And create a bond of friendship, and be able to be able to do ritual in a very relaxed atmosphere, and feel good about themselves, and and then and, and create friendship. And from that, they, I mean, they, they, these these guys that turn up at the, the, the academy, obviously, I'm down in lockdown. The June we have Zoom, we had a couple of Zoom academy meetings, which we've got another one coming next month, which I'll plug that one on 20th of, uh, of August. But what the idea was, 18 months ago, uh, obviously, uh, they, we actually officially put it forward to the. the the steering group and French Grand Master, and he rubber stamped it because he thought it was a great idea. And uh, he saw, I think he's seen that um, it's grown and it's really doing really well. Um, the guys have actually been called on to uh, to do a couple of ceremonies uh, for, for different lodges as well, so that, which is really good. You know, so if a lodge is needing uh, support or help, we've gone out there and, and taken it over and done the take, done a ceremony of initiation or third degree or whatever. So it's it's really good. You know, it's um, fantastic. Uh, it was a fantastic idea, and I've just expanded now, and we're looking to actually expand it even more because we're opening three more academies: one in Stockport. One in the uh, on the Wall Street and one in Sandbach, and okay. um, I'm really looking forward to to growing it more because it, the more we can grow it, the more relaxation, the more people feel they enjoy themselves, the more they in, put into it, the more they'll get out of it. And I think it's I think it's uh, I think it's absolutely excellent. Yeah, you you mentioned that uh, they have a lodge of instruction. So, so how does it really differ? The academy differ from a lodge of instruction because uh, I have heard some people say. The academy is not necessary because there's a lodge of instruction. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's asked, have I been asked a few times about this? The, the idea of the academy is to have a very relaxed atmosphere where people can practice. And when they come from the lodge, if they do things in a certain way, they can actually do it their, their way. If they, if, they, they, if they do the signs one way, that's and they do it. That's how we will we will treat it. If they do words in a certain way, then that's it. If they do anything at all that's in relation to their lodge. Then they will actually do that that performance. Where a lot of instruction, it is obviously emulation, but it's uh, it's very regimental. Very, it's, it's got it's got its purpose, and it's and, and I don't just you because know, I've I've been involved with lodge instruction for many years, and uh, I, it did help me a lot. But I think uh, the academy it's going to help the newer guys to to nurture them through and and help them in the in the sonic journey. So I think it's going to be it's going to help a bit more. They can always do larger instruction as well if they want. There's no, there's not not stopping them there. But the idea is to is to actually make them feel relaxed, get a bond of friendship, and make them feel you know uh, part of a uh, you know part of a team. Okay, team going forward, yeah. Thank you for that. Now you, you mentioned that they actually have what they've done some ceremonies for. Um, other lodges which may or may not have been struggling but th there was also something that 
I heard about demonstration ceremonies. Well, how, do, how does that come about and how does one get involved if they want to? Yeah, we, we, we've got obviously a demonstration which we have uh, done uh, the preparation of a candidate uh, quite a few times actually in lodges where say we've got uh, maybe two or three or four young brethren, newer brethren inside, we've actually used them. And uh, we prepare a candidate, which is very good. And it's a, it's a really good ceremony. To, well, part, part, not really a ceremony, but it actually demonstrates how the candidate, an ex- explanation of how the candidate's actually prepared. Because a lot of people see a candidate being prepared, they don't realise the, what, what it's about. And this tells a story and getting them involved so they know why the candidate's getting involved and why the candidate get, does what he does and what Tyler does and, and uh, taking it forward. So it's, it's, it's a very good, uh, uh, it's, it's a good structure, really, guys. It really is. Sounds like something worth going to once the uh, the lockdown's finished then, doesn't it? It definitely does, yes. We are looking to try and do more if we can. Are, are there any other events that the Masters and Masons Forum get involved in? Yeah, we did have an event this year, which uh, obviously was cancelled at Christleton. And we're actually going to be doing a first degree. And we had the team in place, we had everything ready. And we actually started doing the rehearsals uh, back in Christleton. But obviously, uh, due to lockdown, we had to cancel this. But I'm glad to say that if everything goes right and everything's right, I've actually phoned a few people up and they said they'd like to be involved next year. So watch this space next June, hopefully, and uh, that we'll be then able to continue that performance again, which which I'm looking forward to. I was looking forward to it this year. And uh, anyway. So, so, uh, how did, so how did that event come about then? I mean, was, was that the first event? Was that a follow-on event or is there anything else planned or... How did the, the Christleton one come about? <clears throat> we, we came about. We, we wanted to do uh, a first degree ceremony, and uh, we we, couldn't, we contacted this team group and the uh, PGM to see if uh, he, he would be free to, to actually have a demonstration for people who'd like to put a, put a, an, actual, an actual event on. And uh, we we had a lot of from the academy and other people who said, "Yeah, we'd love to be. We'd love to do this." And we put we, we had a, our committee put together. Our, um, structure and then it was put forward and then that's how it all came about well it's fascinating that because I believe there was one before as well though before I think it was possibly it was one in London yes yeah. yeah. so I mean that's that was the idea what the, going back from the, the London uh, one which obviously I couldn't make at the time but that was very successful in London and uh, obviously we wanted to do one that was in Cheshire so it was nice to, so people that couldn't go down to London who could come and see it up here so uh, yeah that, that, uh, that was what we were planning to do Mm. And where do you see the uh, Masters of Mason Forum going in the future then? I think, it, um, well, my, my plan is to come keep uh, looking at um, Master Mason's uh, reps to, to, to make sure we have coverage in all the halls, they're getting coverage for the, for the um, lodges, that we've, we, we continue supporting everybody. The, obviously, we want to see the academies grow because I think that's going to be a, a great support for, for, for all, the, all the new Masons. Um, I think we'll obviously look into doing more events where we can for, for next year. Uh, there is an event coming up uh, in, in 1st of August, which is a triathlon, which will be from Christleton to Wallasey. Uh, wow. That's that's been done by three reps at the moment, um, which MF um, reps, which which they've been heavily involved with that, and uh, we're having a report back how they how they're getting on. So it's uh, it's doing well. well. Fantastic. So those three reps are they actually? taking part in triathlon or have they got other people who are, who are doing it and they're just organising it? They're just, they're just organising it. They obviously be marshalling it and organising it. And uh, they, they would have got, uh, I think it's £30 to um, to actually enter. And the it's a cycling, uh, a walk and a treasure hunt. So that'd be quite oh, interesting. Okay. okay, I wondered how they were going to do the swim, but uh, the treasure hunt. We're going to do the swim now. <laughs> we're going to do kayaking, but apparently the lake is shut. So they can't do kayaking. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, well, well, thank you very much for providing the information about the uh, Masters of Masons Forum, then, uh, Michael. And let's move on to the uh, five little quick fire to finish. Uh, what, what was your best ever holiday? Well, it's got to be Italy. I mean, uh, I, I mean, it's a beautiful country. Uh, the food is fantastic. The people, are, you know, the, the, the friendship is absolutely excellent. And um, I think the best one I went to was uh, when I went to uh, I went to the Vatican and I actually met the Pope. So you know that was uh, that was uh, quite interesting. And uh, and I've been to Capri and oh yeah, so I think uh, that particular holiday where I went to on that particular time was absolutely superb. So yes, Italy's got to be the best best holiday I've had. Yeah, and not just because your mum's Italian. 
Well, you know, I speak a little bit in it as well, so. <laughs> Very often. Uh, and one thing that most people don't know about you but are about to find out. Okay, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I mean, uh, I'm in the scout. I'm, in the, I'm a trustee of Cheshire Scouts, and I was a, a Cub Scout, a Scout, and Venture Scout, and I was very much heavily involved with Scouts when I was young. And about uh, seven years ago, I, or before that, I was uh, running uh, an organisation called Young Enterprise, which I was the chairman of Cheshire for, and the schools. And anyway, I'd done it for 19 years, and I thought I'd, I thought I'd run my course and want to do something different. And, um, you know, I knew Graham Phillips for many years, and he, he said, oh, would you like to be a trustee for Cheshire Scouts and uh, to see if you can make a difference? And uh, I said, I'd love to do that. So I've been doing it for seven years. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've been involved with the, the Jamboree. I've been involved with the, we had, we had, our, we had our, our marquee. We, we actually presented at the, at the Jamboree. We had a, a tour of the Jamboree uh, recently. Um, I mean, we've got obviously a scouting lodge down in South Cheshire. So, I mean, I'm trying to get the messages about, about scouting and, and mystery. And, and two parallel organisations are very similar. And uh, I'm trying to obviously encourage scout leaders to, to join mystery. And that's what, uh, that's what I've been doing. And in the mysteries, because I do get in, in the actual uh, meetings, I get, uh, I get a slot for Freemasonry and I do plug it as much as I can to try and encourage more people to join. With uh, my knowledge of your personality, and I think plugging it as, as, as often as you can is probably an understatement, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure you're doing a fantastic job for that. Uh, <laughs> what have you felt most proud of? Uh, it's, it's got to me, my, my family. I mean, my, my daughter, uh, she's brought up, she's bringing up four um, grandchildren, three granddaughters and one grandson. I think she's doing a great job and uh, she obviously is a, a teacher as well. So she's uh, she's got a, you know, a, a big... Uh, you know, a bit, um, quite a big of a uh, sort of responsibility, and I think she's done a fantastic job. So she, she's uh, so I'm very proud of my daughter. Yeah. Mm. So it may actually be Chianti because you did mention it earlier. But what is your favourite drink? Well, I mean, I, I do like whiskey. I do like beer. I do. Like, I've got a good collection of whiskeys. There's about 25 different bottles at the moment I've got. But yes, my, my favourite is is red red wine Chianti. I think that's uh, that sort of, sort of just uh, tops tops it a little bit. Yeah, for me. Right. And uh, finally, what do you wish we had asked you on this uh, interview now? Well, there's many things you could have asked me, but the one thing I thought it could be was, uh, what, what is my dream car? <laughs> So are you going to share that with us then? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah I'll do. As you've as you, as you gone back onto the Bond theme again, it's got to be an Austin Martin DB11. Beautiful car. Lovely lines. Wow. I'd love to own one of those. Maybe one wow. day. Maybe one day, you never know. Uh, maybe sell your business and it might be able to get you just that one car. <laughs> that, that could be true. That could be true. <laughs> okay. Well, on behalf of our viewers, I obviously I'd love to thank you, Michael, for uh, your time, for your knowledge of the Master Masons Forum, and for your well-known enthusiasm. So I really appreciate everything you've done. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you.